to the time that I was diagnosed with a deep depression in 1995, and I went to the psychiatrist, and since uh, bipolar disorder used to run in my family, my father had it, my aunt had it, my grandmother had it. When they told me that I might have bipolar disorder, I decided that I, I definitely didn't have that. And uh, it came through uh, some months later, 1996, I had like this huge manic episode, and that's where this video. So as you can see, this is pretty much what a manic episode feels like. And uh, I used to smoke a couple of uh, packs of cigarettes a day, and I didn't sleep for weeks, and all the other characteristics that they've already fully explained. And from that time, I was painting, and these were the paintings that I was doing at the, at the time. Yeah, I'm, it's kind of hard to talk about painting. It's much easier to show. And these pictures, be, these paintings became part of an exhibition that was shown in Mexico City also in 1996. So I'm going, I'm going to go through uh, this timeline. And after the diagnosis in 1997, in 1998, I had uh, mild depression. And my work changed quite a bit. It was uh, all about confusion and layers. and colors were quite different and there was uh, there were some images of hearts as much more as a, as a muscle than uh, something that I was feeling about so all these all these paintings that I'm I'm going to show you are part of the work that I did in 1997 and they're mostly they were mostly shown in Mexico City and another show I had in in Miami At that time, I I had a couple of years of uh, well, some a couple of years of stability, and I made this other series that was called Suspended Particles, and I turned definitely into abstraction, and it gave me a sense of balance and equilibrium that I was needing, and these were also shown in Mexico City, but after that. Uh, I quit medication for a while and I got into another manic episode. That was 1999 and my work completely changed again. And as you can see, sorry, <laughs> as you can see these paintings were made with uh, enamel and charcoal and I probably made some 30 paintings in about a month. So you can see that the, the rate of production increases pretty much when you become manic, and sometimes I completely I, I quit painting when I'm when I'm going through a crisis. But all these paintings have a different quality, and then you can see that the object also is a reflection of what you you are going through. After that. Uh, there was a kind of a milder crisis. I, I went then again to a milder depression and my work changed once again. So there's no, no style at all. And it changed into a kind of confusing state and texts and images starting to show up. 
All these paintings are quite big, about this, the size that are projected. And then I had this other show that was called uh, Accidental Chromatics, where I started working with the layers and with the accidents and color, which is pretty much what I'm uh, regaining again in the series that I've been working on lately. And then I started working with uh, my self-portraits that later became a project that had to do directly with bipolar disorder that was called The Divided Self. And this were one of the first exercises that I did with, uh, with my self-portraits. I'm going to show you another video that was shown at the gallery space. There you go. So this, this was a video installation that was shown also at the gallery space, and that's myself at my parents' house. And when I was probably around five. <laughs> so it's, it's also going back to my childhood and, and to try to get the sense of what we think about life, what's gonna happen with your life when, you, when you're growing up and when you're that age and you're playing and you're having a great time and you never expect that something like this is going to happen. Uh, although my father had the same illness and it was very scary to see him go through his different episodes, I never expected to get the same illness at the time. So <laughs> I wanted to become probably a work in a circus or do something. <laughs> I still do yoga sometimes, so it helps. So after that uh, exhibition that took place in Mexico City again, I showed the first video that I told you, and this was an installation what, that was at the gallery space. And it also had to deal with the confusion that you go through in a, in a manic episode. But actually there were several self-portraits that you can see a couple of them here and there were about 60 self-portraits that report the, the different mood swings and these were some of the paintings that were shown at the time and it was a very important show for myself to to share my experience with the illness and to make it public and to speak about the illness. For example, this, this portrait was done with, uh, with pills, with all, with all the other pills that you usually take to be in a good mood. No? 